Hello everyone and welcome back to the video to the channel. Welcome to the weekend video. As you can see, I'm working in Cascader again and I am currently working on the next scene, next animation for the music video. So this is very much a project I will finish soon. Unlike other projects that I wanted to already have finished. Uh, there's a new thing, or there's, uh, there's a feature in Cascader I haven't used it before, but for this specific project it is absolutely perfect. You can see down at the bar where I have the, uh, the keyframes, that below this there is something that suspiciously looks like an audio line. Uh, that is suspiciously the fact that it's an audio line. And one thing that Cascader can do is you can import videos and uh, music or sound files in general. And the cool thing is that, for example, you can uh, you can use the videos for mocap features if you want to do that. And in this specific case, I basically used audacity to cut out the bridge of the song and put it into uh, Cascader which is about 16 seconds so 480 frames it was really really almost perfectly fitting so I put it to 480 frames I think I'm cutting two frames off of the bridge actually but uh, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make and yeah, I used this to animate the whole thing, uh, thing. What I did is basically I listened to it and whenever there was a line that I wanted to emphasize on that I wanted to have the uh, animation go on, then I set a keyframe. So I am currently have the keyframe set up and there was a little bit of stuff I had to do. Cascader has the nice feature that you can copy keyframes if you hold a certain combination of keys, you can basically just copy a keyframe and you can even override, you can move a keyframe and you can even override other keyframes with that. So I basically just made the keyframes as a sort of marker where I wanted the next keyframe to be, where I wanted the current movement or action to be done. And I then copy pasted basically the keyframe over the next one so that the whole thing is easier to animate because otherwise I would have had to uh, make very weird animation jumps over it would have jumped back to the first frame every time because I keyframed the first frame essentially or the second keyframe actually but yeah it's about 480 frames and there is a length animation. I changed a few things. You will see that in between. I also recorded part of setting up the whole thing in DAS and there is the 16 seconds of scene at the very end. So you can just jump to the very end if you just want to see the final product or not the final product, the interim project uh, product. Uh, this one I rendered without lights and in a smaller resolution, a lower resolution, because of the time. The video is also going up relatively early for my usual times because I am looking into a, a week of morning shift again, so less time. But I will most likely work on the video because there's only one last animation left, which is about 10 seconds into the end of the video. Right here you can see that I'm, I, I wanted her to crouch, like go go down, um, crouch down and I yeah, checked this a few times but I wasn't happy with how this whole thing looked, mainly because I didn't get a natural crouch animation going. So this is the animation that I had at this time and it's just not what I want. So I will actually have the singer, the character, either sit down at the very end or uh, crouch down at the very end of the video in the, in the final, in the last 
10 seconds of the video uh, at the end to the song and I refrained from using it in the uh, bridge but yeah uh, the I will put in the bridge at this point so you can actually listen to the 16 seconds of it oh hear the song of endless beauty breathless moments tales unfold drenched in light our boundless duty to joy and love So much for the choreography of the song and the video or the, the person, the figure, the character. After, so I'm, I'm currently working on the whole uh, stance in general and after I did the whole stance, basically here, this is when I was finished at least with the whole model. You can see that there's still a lot of distortion happening and this is where I started fine-tuning the whole thing playing this over and over you can see that and just um, fine-tuning adjusting a lot of the movement a lot of the uh, finer details making sure the character doesn't look too stiff that everything moves a little bit the head moves, uh, the person goes up and down with their body, not just straight legs. The hand, at least the one that isn't holding the microphone, the, the hand without the microphone is uh, go opening and closing in between. The hand is not just the same the whole time because this is an issue that I saw with the main loop. This is what I call it that the hand is very much the same the whole time. This is an issue that I have to work on and that I will work on the next few animations. Speaking of, I did a short in-between animation. What I did is I basically rigged the uh, Obi from, the, from under the week, so I made a different model clothing piece on the, uh, in the week and I took the Thursday uh, night to rig this and I made a short animation. I will not play this in this video but if you want to see it tell me I will put it in a short. Uh, it's just four seconds or it's actually it is four seconds but I made two different versions. One with a lot of clipping that is more natural and one with no clipping that looks very weird because I had to edit the uh, the moving bow or ribbon. Uh, what I did is I used the Spring Dynamics script to animate the bow and there was a lot of clipping. Obviously the whole thing looks actually relatively natural if you take out the clipping and then I redid the whole thing and edited the the ribbon so it didn't clip but now it looks a little bit unnatural. Overall still was a nice thing and a nice training because I actually learned a lot about weight mapping specifically in this piece so yeah really happy with uh, how this turned out. We're in DES and I'm currently working on the facial structure of the character um, same as last time, basically all five frames I'm jumping and I'm yeah changing the the facial uh, the the facial expression right. Um, Germany we have a different word we have just one word instead of two words facial expression so I'm a bit weirded out sometimes. Not my native language I'm sorry for that. Anyway, yeah, there you can see I'm doing the facial expressions. I did the eyes first, basically I jumped every few frames and made sure she blinks a few times so that I have that, that the eyes move a little bit throughout the whole sequence and then I basically just edited the mouth by making it open and close with varying shapes. And that is basically what I what I did last time as well. So. It's not really something new, something special here. 
uh, what a fun thing. I actually had to delete the keyframes for uh, for the hair and I had to redo the hair with the script as well. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you guys in the next one. Hopefully soon. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, enjoy the render at the end and I will see you guys around.